Yes, sir. You made a way. selection he made a way hallelujah god always make a way hallelujah we're gonna have the next uh, selection It's 
back with me Are you glad? Are you glad? To see him back with me again If you're glad like me Do you know what I want you to do? I want you to give Paul a great hand and if one more thing I want you to do, I want you to wave your hand if I can call you. Paul, oh, Paul, you sound good to me. There's a little more you used to do. If y'all don't mind, I'd like to see can you still do it. Oh. That's the one. I got one more thing I want you to do.
thank God for that selection. Sometimes we feel like we need to just steal away. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So uh, at this time, is there anyone else to that like to um, sing a song or give God praise? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So then we are um, just prepare for the word of God. Hallelujah. I do have a word from the Lord for today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And Father God, I just come in your presence thanking you, O oh God, for today. Thanking you, O oh God, for all that you do and continue to do each and every day for us, O oh God. Father God, I ask that you just um, uh, anoint your people, O oh God, those that will hear your word, O oh God, that they will understand it and that um, they'll be able to receive it with gladness, O oh God. So, Father, I decrease, you increase, O oh God, and bring forth this word as you will see fit, O oh God. I submit to your will. Not my will, but your will be done today in Jesus' mighty name. We bind the adversary that want to come to steal, to kill, and destroy. And we loose the Holy Spirit to be in control. In Jesus' name, we say amen and amen. Hallelujah. So today's title, if I had to give it a title, it would be Don't Allow compromise to strengthen your sinful nature. Hallelujah. See, many Christians are compromising the word of God. And, and I'm going to give you five destructive habits that strengthens your sinful nature that you may not have known. But we know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, Christians are one, not knowing the word of God. Being in the wrong places with the wrong people. Being not committed to prayer. Debating with sin instead of fleeing sin. Thinking you can handle it. Hallelujah. First, in order to evaluate your actions, you must know the word of God. And not compromise that word that you do know. We have an enemy and a heart condition that it's been spiritually diseased because of him. We are born in sin, shaping in iniquity. The enemy wants to change the word of God's truth into a lie. He has been doing that since birth. This lie, he tells us, changes our heart condition and confuses our thinking into questioning the word of God. But who are we to question God's word? Is the word of God truth? Did he really mean what he said? Really? No, God says what he says and he means what he means. Ha! Huh. Glory to his name. So we don't debate the word of God. We believe it. In Matthew's, the fourth chapter, the third verse, it is the one tempting, having come to him, saying, if you are the son of God, speak to those stones. May become loaves of bread. And what did Jesus say? In the fourth verse, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. So we must study the word of God. 
2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But unfortunately, there are Christians that are, what, hearers of the word but not doers. My God. God does not tempt us, but he sometimes do test us. And that testing can place us in Satan's line of fire. Second, we have family and friends who are not saved. And we will still have fellowship with them. My God. It's what usually on birthdays, childbirth, marriages that we may fellowship. After all, we are not hermits. Neither do God expect us to be. But we have to be careful that they don't influence us because the sinful nature that's in us remembers the past. So you don't hang around too long. We must be the light for them. Salt. Influence them. And if you see your your light has become dim. We must depart. Remember in 2 Corinthians, the 6th uh, verse, the 14th chapter. And this is King James. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light? and darkness yes jesus was among sinners but remember he had no sin in him but you do therefore we must evaluate the places and the people that we be around do not adopt their values and patterns of life and thirdly we must have a praying life because through prayer, we become strengthened. John 15, 3, 5 reminds us, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me and you can do nothing. How do you remain in him? Through prayer. It brings you into an alignment with his will. As you pray daily, you invite the Holy Spirit to be with you and to comfort and direct you. See, it is the Holy Spirit that can give us answers. Help us to feel God's love and bring feelings of peace and joy into your heart. Fourth, we don't debate sin. We flee. If we debate the enemy, he has our attention. And the scripture says in James 4, 7, to resist the devil and he will flee. So how do you resist the devil? First, we must acknowledge that he exists. Become aware of his activities, which include temptation, slander, and false accusations. We submit to God and stand firmly against the devil attacks by putting on what? The full armor of God. We can claim spiritual authority over him because of what? The work that Christ completed on the cross. When we compromise, there are consequences. For we all will stand before God and give an account 
for our actions, whether they're good or bad. We know this account has nothing to do with salvation, but what reward are you not getting because of the compromise? And finally, don't think you can handle it. The flesh is strong will and continues to bring up the lust that lies within. Temptation will come to us all. That's why Jesus in the model prayer tells us to ask to be led not into temptation and be delivered from evil. In 1 Corinthians 10, 12, he says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. Everyone can fall. Everyone can fail. We must acknowledge that we need Jesus and is weak in the flesh. Without Christ, we can do nothing. We ought to make no provisions for the flesh. We all have the need for self-discipline. We don't get in a race to be disqualified. <laughs> First Corinthians 9, 24. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as that you get a prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes in into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Hallelujah. And verse 24 begins with a question about the victor of the race in Christian life. There's no medals for those who merely finish the race, but only for those that first to cross the finish line. My God, in the exercise of our faith, we should strive to be like that victor. Notice through that the aim isn't victory so much as its particular way of running the race. The comparison in our faith here is not parallel of victory so much as the kind of effort and dedication that victory requires. The beginning of verse 25 confirms these parallels. It is not the runner's victory nor the prize that really matters. Instead, Paul highlights how the athlete exercised self-control in all things. In 1 Corinthians 9.25, the victor's flowers are actually a mere shadow, a pale imitation of the imperishable flower towards which we strive. Self-control remains at the center of the image. Paul is drawn as we move to verse 26. The Christian's athlete trains with a purpose in mind, not aimlessly or in vain as a boxer would do, looking to strike in the air. Instead, Paul exercises self-control. He said, I punish my body and enslave it. 1 Corinthians 9, 27. A severe discipline or absence ideal is not necessary in view, but more likely a way of life that aligns all things together. Hallelujah. Towards one aim. And that is the proclamation of the good news. We prepare ourselves for a life defined by sharing what? The gospel through self-control and discipline. The point that Paul was making is that we need to live a purposefully life of discipline and remove barriers to growing in faith. 
living in a Christian community and pursuing a life of witness to Jesus Christ. When sharing the gospel, we like Paul must be mindful of our culture. Never shrink away from those eternal truths that may what, rub people the wrong way. But the word is truth. If God said it, that settles it. My God. And we must always season our words with the acts of compassion so that the unbeliever may see what our good deeds and then glorify our Father in heaven. Hallelujah. That is how we accomplish what God wants us to do. We can't allow compromise to change it and, and not be aware that uh, when we are uh, allowing things to occur in our lives, what we are really doing is strengthening. Not so much our flesh, but what are we strengthening? <laughs> it goes back to the beginning. We are strengthening, <coughs> excuse me, the sinful nature that lies within us. That's what you do when you allow compromise to come in place. And many times we do this not aware. It is so uh, subconscious. When we uh, allow our, our families that are not saved to, to come or we go to their birthday party or or if they call us and want us to come to a certain activity, we don't think of anything other than going to show support. And I don't think Paul was saying that we can't do that. But what is he saying is that we have to be the light for them when we are with them. Don't let them influence us. Or have us to pick up what they are doing and saying it's okay. No, the word stands for truth. And that's what we have to be aware of. So that was the word for today. I hope we understand and we got clear uh, clarification of what it is that we as Christians do. Now, we're not talking about the unbeliever. We are talking about Christians. Because we already know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but what mighty do God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. We have the power and the strength and the authority given to us by Jesus Christ so that we can, yes, be that one to, to overcome. But we have to know that there is an enemy. And that enemy comes only to what? And we all know it. We say it all the time. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But don't think that enemy is not with you. Paul lets us know in the book of Romans, he said, there are other members inside of us. And he said, what? That we war against the flesh. The flesh and the spirit, they war against one another. So they're with you everywhere you go. So we cannot allow compromise. Don't strengthen the sinful nature, but strengthen by submitting to the word of God. Asking for strength. This is what Paul is saying to us, that we must ask for the strength. Lord, help me when there's a need or when I'm in a situation that, that uh, I am tempted. Because I think it, I believe it's 
1 Corinthians 10, 13, that said, there's no temptation that taketh thee except that which is what? Common to man. It ain't no new thing. It's something that you done been through. Seen, heard. But we are to have faith in God, knowing that he is able to give us a way of escape. He's able to remove us from that temptation. If we allow the Holy Spirit to do it. So we have to be doers of the word of God, not just hearers only. So we thank God. We thank God for that word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then we want to just go into prayer. And we're going to ask the apostle Michael to um, just open in prayer at this time. Wherever the Lord leads. Hallelujah. Father, we just come to you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We ask him, Father God, that you continue to open our minds, Father God, that we may be able to hear and understand what it is that you're saying to us, Father. Father, we pray right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you touch those that are sick, Father God. God, you know who they are and where they are, Father God. Have your hands upon them right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, we pray, Father God, for those that are that are grieving the loss, Father God, of a family member or a friend, Father God. We ask your hand to be upon them, Father yes, God, in the lonely hours, Father God. Yes. We ask that you touch them, Father, just in them, Father God, and even children, Father God. Move upon them, Father God, as they deal with these issues as well. Father, we pray, Father God, that you continue to move upon ministry, Father God. Lift the ministries up, Father God, moving upon them, Father God, making a way where it just doesn't seem to be any way. God, we pray right now, Lord, that you continue to touch every person, Father God, to have ears to hear. Touch them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. Move upon every organ and every blood vessel, Father God. Bone and marrow, Father God. We bind up, Father God, heart attack, top blood pressure, Father God. Aches, Father God, we even bind up veins not uh, blowing up, Father God. We ask in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you heal your people, Father yes, God. Yes, Lord. And we ask you that right now in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord God. Lord. This, this fold that goes through, this respiratory problem, Father God. We ask your hand to be upon yes. this respiratory problem, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Touch like you've never touched before, yeah. Father God. Move like you've never moved before, Father God. And we thank you. We're so grateful, Father God. We know that you can do it, Father God, and you will do what is necessary and needed to be done. We pray, Father God, over Heavenly Hill Ministry, Father God, that you move upon it, that you increase, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you make ways where there doesn't seem to be no way, Father God. We bind the devil, Satan, the Lord receives you, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for that prayer. Hallelujah. And I'm to remind you that we do have Bible study on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. And the number to call is 701-802-5253. And the access code is 477202. Amen. And if you would like to be a blessing to the ministry, we are part of Give a Fly. Uh, dot com and uh, the name of the ministry is there and you can give as the Lord leads. We thank you and may the Lord bless you and continue to strengthen you as you, you know as you continue to just worship him and serve him because truly he is the way, the truth and the life and that is the word for today. God bless you. Amen. Have a good Amen. week. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to close out with a, a song. Hallelujah.
Just thank God. Hallelujah. Y'all have a blessed week. Amen. Okay, see you on Tuesday at, at 5. I mean at 6 p.m. Glory to God. Amen. And amen. I'm going to try to get this here. Turn on.